Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I want to talk about the $50 trillion lawsuit against the SEC. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So Hang Loose tweeted this thread exposing the SEC to a $50 trillion lawsuit. This lawsuit contains obviously the SEC, all of the major banks and brokers and market makers over malicious naked short selling activity and the creation of synthetic shares. Over 200 companies and their investors were asked to join the fight back in 2004. This lawsuit was then renewed back in 2012 after the Occupy Wall Street movement. I think the majority of the problem with this lawsuit back in 2004 and 2012 is that back then there wasn't enough publicity. There wasn't enough public eyes on this massive, massive problem that doesn't just affect one or two over-the-counter companies. Instead, it impacts massive amounts of companies traded not only on the OTC markets, but also on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ as well. Even back in 2004, there was up to 200 companies falling foul of naked shorting. Now in 2021, 2022, I bet that number's closer to 2,000, if not more. And Hang Lu said, apes, we need your help to find out how to get the government and the institute silenced. So this lawsuit says the American Bank Activities Reform Commission has launched a contact campaign to unite domestic efforts of small cap companies and their stockholders ahead of a planned $5 trillion class action lawsuit against the US SEC, which will charge the commission with negligence and enforcing the truth in securities laws of the United States. Now, obviously, back in 2004, this was only a $5 trillion problem or a $5 trillion class action lawsuit. But if I scroll slightly higher up, this part of the extract actually comes from 2012, which states that the IBARC has announced that the SEC lawsuit has been increased to $50 trillion in light of the recent impending collapse of Bank of America. If naked shorting was a $5 trillion problem back in 2004 and a $50 trillion problem back in 2012, it wouldn't surprise me if naked shorting is now a $500 trillion problem. Now you may say, hang on Tom, isn't the total market capitalization of the entire US stock market only around $53 trillion? If that's the case, how can naked shorting be a $500 trillion problem? Don't forget the total market capitalization is a value screenshot in one point of time. It obviously doesn't include the value of all trades that are placed every single second of every single day. If we head on over to the CBOE website and look at the US equities market volume summary, we can see that on a daily basis, around $388 billion worth of stock is traded every single day. That means in just one single year, around $146 trillion worth of US stocks are traded on a yearly basis. Obviously, naked shorting isn't something that's just been around for one single day or one single year. It's been around pretty much since the inception of the US stock market. And therefore, it wouldn't surprise me if over the last 10 years, naked shorting has gone from being a $50 trillion problem to potentially even a $500 trillion problem. And guys, if you're getting a little bit worried holding your AMC and Fidelity due to all the recent glitches and the fact that Fidelity actually supports short sellers, Mumu are currently buying you and giving you a free share of AMC on top of their usual five free shares just for signing up with Moomoo using the link in the description below and making your first deposit. If you sign up with Moomoo and make your first deposit, you get two free shares valued up to $3,500 each. If you can deposit $100, then you also get a free share of AMC bought specifically for you. And guys, if you can deposit the full $2,000, then you also get an extra three free shares on top of all of that. Again, worth $3,500 each. Moomoo is also a brilliant commission-free trading platform that doesn't make its money from payment for order flow. Moomoo and Futu make their money from margin interest and from payment fees, and therefore you don't have to worry about your trades going through sketchy dark pools or being given to Citadel. Moomoo also has excellent technical indicators and advanced charting tools. Moomoo also publishes daily short selling volume on top of a number of other key indicators. 
So guys, if you haven't already, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below to get up to $17,500 in free stocks and a free share of AMC. The lawsuit goes on to say to that end, ABRC is asking stockholders and the managements of companies victimized by naked shorting to join in the planned suit as lead plaintiffs through an action which plans to not only name the SEC as an agency of the US government as the key defendant in the case, but also past and present attorneys who have worked for or represented the SEC. And it says all told, more than 4,000 SEC registered attorneys may be called upon to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the case. This is unlike the SEC and NASD, which has electronically penned almost insignificant small fines, but which, in general, has left most of those involved in the practice alone, the London Stock Exchange has simply ordered market makers involved in the scandal to give investors who did not receive shares their money back. ABARC claims more than $100 billion has been lost in equity due to the SEC's negligence in enforcing the truth in securities laws, particularly as it relates to naked shorting. Back in that 2004 lawsuit, ABRC named many large brokers and banks like E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Citigroup, Bank of America, Deutsche, the DTCC, and many, many others. It also named all of those 200 companies that had fallen foul to naked shorting. This 2012 article then followed it up saying the IBARC has announced that the SEC lawsuit has been increased to $50 trillion in light of the recent impending collapse of Bank of America. Hang Lo said this movement has made a second attempt to materialize in 2012 with renewed support from Occupy Wall Street. And he said right now in 2021, 2022 may be our best and last shot to get this right as we have them on the ropes. Obviously right now there's so much publicity around market manipulation and the SEC is this time simply having to address it. The problem has now got too big for the SEC to just leave it alone and brush it under the carpet and pretend that it never happened. Hang Lucid get loud and understand that the SEC is our enemy. They don't want real change and therefore we have to force it. Unusual Wales is a page on Twitter that I visit time and time again for their key information. But Unusual Wales is also one of the most prolific voices in this movement, regularly discussed on massively public channels like Joe Rogan. The more publicity we can bring to market manipulation and the unfair US stock exchange, the better. When it becomes a household topic, only then will the SEC simply not have a chance but to address it and correct it. Hang Loose also gave a perfect example that's been naked shorted over the years. He said this is what a helpless company looks like being attacked by naked short sellers. This stock here is Saflink. They were one of several hundred companies IBRC sought to join as a defendant in their lawsuit against the SEC. And he said, look how perfectly algo or algorithm that downward slope is into bankruptcy. Saflink at one point hit highs of around $7 per share, but then had this almost perfect exponential decay to lows of $0.021 per share. Saflink obviously then at some point in 2008 or 2009 went bankrupt as they simply couldn't raise any money from investors due to their minuscule stock price. Hang Lu said that company was worth a billion dollars and the Wall Street crooks sucked up all of that money creating synthetics and got to keep every single penny. Those Wall Street crooks never had to buy back shares after shorting it because they drove the business into bankruptcy. And on top of that, not only did these crooks never have to cover their synthetic short position, but they also never had to pay tax on those unrealized profits. Because those crooks never actually closed their short positions, they never actually recognized all of those cash gains, and therefore never actually paid any tax. You may say, Tom, how is that really helpful for these crooks leaving those positions open with massive amounts of unrealized profits if they can't use that cash for future trades or withdraw it from the business? But you forget there's other banks on Wall Street that will lend to these hedge funds and these crooks based off their unrealized profits because they can use those unrealized gains as collateral or as security. 
and therefore these crooks can get cash based on those profits. They never pay tax on those unrealized profits and also never pay tax on the cash they receive because it's classed as a loan. I've spoken about zombie stocks like this on the channel many times before and I think the crooks were trying to do exactly the same thing to AMC before the apes stepped in to prevent them. I think if these crooks naked shorting AMC potentially like Melvin Capital and Citadel continued to get away with that naked shorting they would have driven AMC down past $2 to a fully fledged zombie stock. And now not only can these crooks not withdraw money on their unrealized profits because they're significant unrealized losses, they're also at some point going to be forced to close their position because they cannot maintain that loss position. Obviously, if they're sitting on a massive position of unrealized gains, paying a small maintenance fee every year to roll those synthetic shorts isn't much of a problem. But if they're sat on massive amounts of unrealized losses, then paying that maintenance fee with crackdowns coming and liquidations coming their way as well, well, they will at some point be forced to cover. Speaking of which, due to the significantly higher exchange reported short interest than expected, the AMC and GameStop utilization has jumped to 100%. The last time we saw AMC utilization jump and hold at 100% was back in May, just before the big June run up. You may also remember in my video yesterday, I spoke about GameStop and AMC's utilization. And with GameStop, the last time that was 100% utilized was back in December, January, just before the GameStop January sneeze. I think we'll have to see what happens over the next few days and next few weeks, whether AMC's utilization continues to hold at 100 for a matter of a week or two, or whether we have a quick jump to 100% utilized and then straight back down again. I think if AMC's utilization maintains at 100% utilized, I don't think it will be long before we see another AMC run. Ortex also noted that the cost to borrow is increasing rapidly, especially in GameStop. Obviously, this means that AMC and GameStop shares are becoming harder to borrow to then short because obviously those shares are already 100% utilized and 100% fully shorted. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about the $50 trillion SEC lawsuit. I personally think this lawsuit should be revived once again due to the massive amounts of publicity on market manipulation. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.